So today we're going to be solving equations that have no solutions and infinitely many solutions. But before we do that, let's talk about what the solution to an equation actually means. So I'm going to pull up an easier equation that we can look at. For example, this one, 9x minus 15 equals 48. And we've solved this one before, the answer is 7. But what does that solution 7 actually mean? It means that if I take 7 and put it in for x here, that this side of the equation will actually equal the other side. In other words, 9 times 7 minus 15 will actually equal 48. 9 times 7 is 63. 63 minus 15 is indeed 48, which is what it's supposed to. And in this case, there is only one possible value of x that works for this equation. 7 is the only number we can put in for x here to make this side equal 48. However, that's not the case with all algebra equations. And that's what we're going to look at today. So let's take a look at this first example. So we've got 2 times 4x plus 7 in parentheses equals 8x minus 11. We've got parentheses, so my first step is the distributive property. So 2 times 4x is 8x plus 2 times 7 is 14. And I'll drop down my equals, drop down my 8x, and drop down my minus 11 on the other side. Now, I've got x's on both sides of the equal sign, so I'm going to subtract 8x. But what I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side. Now, when I do this, the 8x's undo each other, and all that's left over here is 14. I'll drop down my equal sign. And on the other side, 8x minus 8x, they undo each other. And all that's left over here is negative 11. And now we've got an interesting situation. Notice, we have no x's in our equation. We have 14 equals negative 11. But if you think about that, that's not possible. 14 can't possibly, it can't possibly equal negative 11. 14 never will equal negative 11. So we end up with a statement that is not true. It's contradictory. So what that tells us is there is no solution to that original equation. In other words, there is no value of x that you can put into this equation so that this side of the equal sign would equal the other side of the equal sign. Okay? There is no possible number that will work for that equation. And the reason we know that is because once we started solving, we got to a point where there was no x's in the equations, and we had a number equal to something that it clearly is not equal to. We come to a contradictory situation. So there's no possible solution. Let's take a look at another example here. 2 times, in parentheses, 2x minus 8 equals 4 times, in parentheses, x minus 4. All right. So I see parentheses, so my first step is the distributive property. Okay, 2 times 2x is 4x minus 2 times 8 is 16. Now, drop down my equal sign. On the other side, again, distributive property because there's parentheses there. 4 times x is 4x minus 4 times 4 is 16. So now, I've gotten rid of the parentheses. I got x's on both sides, so I'm going to subtract all the x's off one side, minus 4x. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Now when I do that, the x's undo each other, but the negative 16 drops down. Drop down my equal sign. On the other side, the 4x's, they undo each other, and this negative 16 drops down. And look what we have here. Again, we have a situation where there's no x's, but this time look at what the statement says. Negative 16 equals negative 16. Now that's a true statement this time. Unlike before where it contradicted itself, 14 can't equal negative 11. This time, yeah, negative 16 does equal negative 16. There's no variables left. It's only this number is equal to itself. That's a true statement. What that tells us is there are infinitely many solutions. In other words, 
any number we stick in for x here and here, we'll make this equation work. Any number. Like we could stick any number in for x, and this side will automatically equal that side. And that's what infinitely many solutions means. All right? So when you're solving algebraic equations and you get to a point where there's no x's and you just have a number equal to another number, you're going to have either no solutions or infinitely many solutions. And it's just a matter of is the number equal to a different number, which can't be true, so there's no solutions, or do you have it where you have a number is equal to itself? In that case, it's always true, so there are infinitely many solutions. All right. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please hit that like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.